Hello and welcome. I'm Dave Elliott, Global Product Lead for Storage Products here at Google. I'm a former backup admin and spent most of my career in storage and backup. Uh, I, over the last four years, I've been helping Google shape its cloud storage offering. Uh, and today, we're here to talk about the economics of tape versus cloud and what the real costs are associated with each. So a few things before we get started. First, um, this is a construct or a discussion, right? It's a Hopefully, we'll provide a way for you to think about the cost of tape in cloud, and it'll open up a dialogue for you and your team. Uh, it's not formal, it's not highly produced, and it's probably wrong in a lot of areas. Second thing, tape isn't going away anytime soon, right? So there's lots of significant sunk cost in tape and real benefits to tape. Really, the question is, the question we're trying to answer today or the dialogue we're having today is, what's changing, right? There's a changing landscape, there's changing technologies, there's changing requirements, and there's changing possibilities. A uh, third is, frankly, I'm biased, right? I worked with tape early in my career. I work with cloud now. Uh, another bias is I live in the, in the US, um, but I work with customers all over the globe. Uh, I guess a another caveat is that I recognize that there's many different variables associated, as many assumptions. No two architectures are the same. No two networks are the same. No two policies are the same. I recognize that up front. Um, again, this is intended to be just sort of a dialogue and discussion, maybe a construct for you to have a dialogue with your team. And some things I assume are a wash between tape and cloud. So we're not talking a lot about things like security in this conversation. So with that, let's go ahead and get started on the economics of tape versus the cloud. Um, as an agenda today, I, I wanted to go through these five things. Start off with tape and cloud uses. So there's good reasons that both of these exist. And now that there's, they're beginning to, to be some overlap between cloud storage and long-term archival or long-term long storage, um, I wanted to talk, you know, start, start the conversation off with a look at um, how the two of them compare uh, historically. Second, and then really the heart of the conversation here, is the capital and operational cost. Uh, and and I, again, wanted to create sort of a construct as things you should look at when you're looking at both the upfront investment, the capital cost, and then the ongoing cost um, or the operations. Um, number three, examples and tools. Um, so hopefully I'll, I'll open up um, um, a, an online calculator here where we can look at a um, real uh, uh, example of, of tape versus cloud and talk a little bit about future considerations and next steps. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Um, if, if you uh, have to drop early from this webinar, uh, these are the key decision drivers or the things that maybe stand out a little bit um, when you're looking at the, the economic considerations. Uh, as we walk through the, you know, the, the spreadsheet in a bit, um, these are the things you should really think about as differentiators because, again, no two environments are the same. First, durability. So if you have a high uh, requirement for durability, that significantly impacts the economics of tape versus cloud. Uh, second, personnel, cost, and efficiency. If you have high personnel cost and or low efficiency um, or the other way around, again, that's going to significantly impact the difference, uh, differences in, in the economics between tape and cloud. Third, data optimization. I'll talk uh, a little bit about this because this is one that uh, is, is uh, usually missed uh, when talking about tape versus cloud. It's what you can do to remove redundant data, to remove garbage data, and to optimize the amount of data that, in fact, needs to be stored for a long period of time. And then close with a little, uh, or, or, or think a little bit about data utility, right? So what's the greatest use you're getting out of that data that's stored uh, long-term, that's stored in tape um, or it's stored in cloud? So those four things, I'll, go, I'll, I'll, I'll walk through, I'll get to these um, as we talk over the next few minutes and wrap with it um, at the end. Durability, personnel cost, data optimization, data utility. So let's take a quick step back and and um, reiterate or sort of re, um, revisit why tape and cloud exist. Where, where the, the, probably most of you use tape because it's portable, it's durable, it's inexpensive, it's cheap, and it is installed already, right? There's a, there is a sunk cost. You've got this investment, actually not just in the hardware, but also in the uh, time it takes to, to uh, understand how to operate it. Um, so tape exists for good reasons for to, to get your data, to get your, your data off-site. Um, it's portable and it really works well. Uh, cloud, on the other hand, really came up through uh, sort of the concept of outsourcing or moving your power, your cooling, your redundancy, uh, moving the, the requirements of availability and a whole bunch of other things off to somebody else, letting you focus on what you do best. 
right? You don't need to worry about the mechanics of your infrastructure. Instead, you're going to worry about focusing on things that allow you to do things differently. Differentiate yourselves. Now, I think it's really important when we talk about tape and long-term storage that we call out this, you know, this classic difference between backup and archive. A lot of people uh, conflate the two. Um, backup really is about uh, recovery. Um, it's is a really important distinction. Um, uh, it's a second or third copy, while archive is really for legal or regulatory requirements usually, or to meet an important SLA. It's, uh, it's also the case that some people turn backups into archives, which is a cause of significant, uh, really significant inefficiencies. So as a, that, that is a sort of a background or a precursor. Let's get into the heart of this conversation, the capital and operational cost um, associated with both tape and cloud. So at a high level, disk, tape, and cloud, so I included disk here. If you're looking at the cost of long-term storage, this is a very just, again, high-level snapshot. Capital outlay, the winners are here in green. Capital outlay, cloud wins because there's, there's, there's virtually no upfront capital outlay. Um, capacity costs, usually tape wins when you just look at the cost per terabyte or per gigabyte um, over a period of time from a capacity standpoint, it's, it's usually tape that wins. Shipping and logistics, cloud wins because there are none. You don't ship disk, you don't ship tape. I mean, you don't ship cloud like you ship a disk or a tape. Networking cost, um, tape wins. There's, there's none or very low, in fact. Um, personnel cost uh, is lowest with cloud or disk because they're more automated, more direct processes. And recovery costs are low with cloud and disk as well. But what I really want to focus on here are tape and cloud. Uh, there's been a lot of conversation on, on disk versus tape. Um, and now I really want to talk a little bit, uh, talk about cloud and tape. So let's first go deep on the capital or upfront cost of tape. Now, if you use tape today, hopefully this will look familiar to you. Um, the biggest upfront cost is buying your library, buying your autoloader. Um, this can range from 3K to 50K or into the hundreds of thousands of dollars. It could be a little bit lower. I've, I've purchased an autoloader that costs less than that, um, but it also could be a lot higher. I've I've seen um, libraries that run into the uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, it's typically capitalized over three years, but nobody. But but the lifespan typically is longer than that. Um, the for the next thing that people think about in terms of upfront cost is tapes, right? You need to buy tapes um, upfront, um, both for your backup and archival, and this this can significantly uh, vary depending on what your backup schedules are. If your backups um, but 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 generally uh, you might pay somewhere between thirty and one hundred and fifty dollars. I think the street price for an LTO six is around thirty bucks, and an LTO seven's up around one hundred and thirty, one hundred and forty right now. And they're rated for long periods of time, but nobody or very few people or very few sophisticated people that I know actually uh, trust those long periods of time. Those long periods of time. Uh, you may need to make improvements to your um, to your server, your networking, or your SAN. Um, you may have to, 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 to make changes to your server and maybe buy a fiber channel card, things like that, in order to back up, up uh, to, or, or move your data to, to, the, to, a, tape, um, uh, to a tape device. Um, and then, of course, these are physical devices that need to be shipped. They need to be you know, unpacked and plugged in and, and put in a rack. Um, uh, they, they need to be uh, physically managed uh, up front. So these are the costs. You know, you have to buy the loader, you have to buy the tapes, you have to make changes to your server, your networking, um, and then you have to actually spend some money up front to get the things started up. Generally high cost. Um, now let's move from upfront cost. I should say for cloud, I, I originally had made a slide that said this, these are the capital cost up front. Really, there are no capital cost up front for cloud. The capital cost up front for cloud it are really just the learning curve it takes, and it's you know, it's it's a very very small learning curve, low learning curve. Um, so let's move from capital cost, upfront cost, to operational cost, right? Or these are your ongoing expenses, in fact. Um, and th let's start with cloud, um, and these are the 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 things the the six things that um, typically you should take into account when you think about your ongoing cost of um, storing things long term in a cloud. First, ingestion, right? Getting the data to the cloud, um, 
th this is uh, this is not trivial. If you have significant amounts of data, you can do it either um, online um, directly if you have um, good networks, um, or you can even do it offline. You can ship um, drives uh, and have them ingested by by third parties. Um, storage. Storage is typically what people focus on the most, and rightfully so. It's by far the largest portion of your cost. Um, but remember, storage is, is all-inclusive. It gives you the high level uh, of 11.9's uh, durability. I'll talk a little, a little bit about in a moment with online access and on-demand and all that good stuff. But that is typically the highest cost. Um, and it'll range anywhere from, at least with, with, with Google and, and with other cloud providers, this is the general range from 2.6 cents down to a penny a gig a month. Um, operations. Um, so this is uh, our charges for operations in the cloud. Um, this is typically not an issue for long-term storage, but I did actually have a customer want to have 800 million files who wanted um, to be kept as separate objects and it cost him, uh, we, we charge a penny a gig, uh, a, a, sorry, a penny per 10,000 operations. So it cost him um, 800 bucks to, to um, to, to, to do the um, uh, the puts on on his uh, th his operations cost um, excess reads this is something that um, you do need to think about uh, it, it, for um, long term storage uh, our tier that I'll talk about in a minute is near line and that's intended for long term storage so um, it has a lower cost it's it's less than fifty percent it's closer to about thirty percent of the cost of traditional online object storage. Uh, but it also has a cost to read the data because it's not intended to be read frequently. And it it's a cost of, of a penny a gig um, for, for the reads. Uh, networking, there is an excess burden on networking, but this is really tricky because network configurations and costs associated with them can vary so significantly. I think it's just important to point out that moving data from on-prem to a private data center or, or private data center to the cloud um, for long-term storage does have some cost through in increased network traffic. And then finally, if you're talking about operational cost of cloud, it's personnel. And you'll, you're going to find, when I, as I mentioned early on, one of the overriding themes is that um, cloud and disk, for that matter, give you the ability to optimize your data, to optimize your entire corpus, so you can delete redundant data, eliminate garbage. And this benefit, in fact, will require some additional effort. So if you think about the operational cost of cloud, which is what we're talking about on this slide, um, you, should, you should, to be fair, take that into account. Um, and and there, is, there will be some effort, but of course that effort will pay off uh, many times over uh, as you reduce the amount of data that you have. Um, now let's move on to the operational cost of tape. Um, and there's, I've got two slides on this. The first is um, focused on people and infrastructure. Um, and again, going back to one of my main themes, people, um, you, tape is a manual process, right? Tape requires you to, uh, to, to, to manage, to, to physically move stuff, to grab stuff, to move it around. And um, that, that, takes, that, you know, you, that, that takes people to do it. And um, if, when you're looking at the, the real cost of tape, you need to take that into account and you need to understand how efficient your labor is. Um, you might be anywhere from a half a person or a quarter of a person up to three, four, five. I've never seen actually one bigger than, than, than five or six. Um, but there's also a significant cost to uh, restore data. So, you know, the question I have in italics here is how efficient is your team? And you need to factor that in and, because, it, it, again, it varies so significantly. And this is a very significant piece of the drive, drivers of your ongoing operational cost of tape. There's also ongoing costs associated with your hardware, your tape infrastructure. Um, so uh, the the hardware maintenance is uh, is you know anywhere from 19 to 25 percent. You also need to uh, be concerned with or think about uh, uh, tape refresh um, maintenance. You know you need to think about the durability of these tapes. You know when you're going to replace them. Certain tapes are going to are going to fail. Also you need to think about the compatibility as formats change as you move from LTO four to five to six to seven to eight. Um, you know, there's there are some um, real costs associated with with that. Um, offsite storage and transportation. Um, whether you pay for a service like Iron Mountain to store your tapes uh, in in their own protected vault or in in 
If you store it in your own secure environmentally, environmentally safe vault yourself, these costs are in fact real and never ending. And then uh, finally, uh, and this is one of the really big themes I mentioned at the, at the top of this, is um, if you think about uh, building a redundant or durable infrastructure. This is a really big one that's often overlooked when you're looking at the economics of tape versus cloud. If a high durability, if, if high durability is important to you, uh, you'll need to engineer that, uh, and you'll engineer, engineer a certain level of redundancy to get that durability. It might require two copies or even three copies of your data. So for cloud, 11.9's durability comes built in. So for tape, this could double or triple the calculation to have a similar type level of redundancy. Um, a real world example, I called out here, I had a customer who had 10, uh, north of 10 petabytes of, of storage uh, that, that were being put off onto tape. Um, they had three job redundant copies. Um, they refreshed the entire corpus every five years and they really provided a white glove service. They did lots of testing. Um, they, they really, this was very important data to them and they calculated, they, they paid about four cents per gigabyte per month um, to maintain that level of durability. So that's a really important calculation as you think through. Um, it's, it's the level of, of redundancy or really a level of durability, target durability that you have. How many nines? So the question I put here is, you know, what would it cost you to deliver 11 nines durability? How many copies would you have to have? Um, operational cost of tape, um, this is the second one I, I, I mentioned before, optimizations. This is um, a really uh, often ignored, um, often hidden or misunderstood cost. Um, first, in any calculation, you, take it, you should take into account the actual tape utilization. Um, it's not typically 100%. Um, second, you realize that there's a tremendous amount of copied or redundant data that, uh, that, that, that needs to be uh, or that can be uh, removed. Um, to call this redundant data requires work. And with data locked away on a tape, it requires a lot of work, so much so that most people don't put much of an effort into cleaning up the copies. A third and related op uh, optimization uh, that's really hard is just removing the garbage data. Um, if, you, if you look at some of the stats that are on the slide, you know, the redundant data, their IDC claims there's 23 generally in, in inter enterprise or global 2000 companies, there's, there's on average uh, 23 copies of the same file. I and mean, you look at all the different places that a file might live, all the different backup copies, all the archive copies, all the different file servers. Um, and it's a challenge to remove those. Same with garbage data. Tech Target came out with the, the statistic that um, any uh, that a given 30% of an average uh, organization's data uh, could be deleted. And so really the question there is, um, how much effort does it require to remove this data? You know, what's the, the required effort to, to optimize that, that, that data? All right, so with that, um, let's move on to uh, a really a, a short discussion of, uh, of networking. I think networking is uh, a key thing. It's a, just frankly just a common question that I get asked. Networking, generally the question is something along the lines of, uh, hey, uh, my network is unreliable, slow, um, and, and therefore, is the cloud right for me? A few things I want to point out here. First, uh, backup and archive is typically an offline process. So if they get interrupted, um, they can continue. Um, or or, or that, that's a second piece. Is they get interrupted, they can, they can be resumed. Um, and that's typically built into to all kinds of software, um, including um, to, to Google. Uh, network throttling, throttling is a common feature to make sure you don't um, uh, the, uh, consume your network. Um, Local caching or to uh, a, a series of disk arrays, uh, JBOD is effective and cheap, um, and DR in the cloud uh, mitigates many of these concerns. So if you um, are going to recover to the cloud, um, then that's a really important uh, uh, way to avoid having to move lots of data back on-prem. And the last thing I'll say on this is, um, you know, it, the, the, cl the net your network can really be a problem, but networking speeds, access, reliability, they're, they're improving all the time. And so it might not be the right time for you now to move to the cloud, 
but um, it, you know, keep an eye on it because um, this is something that's important to Google and so, you know, it's important to a lot of government institutions and a lot of government entities. Um, speeds are improving. Okay, so with that, I wanted to move to a, a real calculation, uh, a real or a, a example, I guess, uh, calculation. So let me go ahead and move over to um, an online calculator that we created. Uh, and this is really just a back of the envelope calculator. The things in yellow are the things that can in fact, uh, are cells that can be changed um, based upon the assumptions that we just talked about. Uh, and it'll calculate out for you here the annual cost of cloud and the annual cost uh, of, of tape. And what I did was I, I um, determined the annual cost based upon um, multiple, multiple years. So um, I, I made the assumption over here, the number of years on tape. Uh, you got the amount of data up here. You got the min minimum number of copies. Again, going back to the what's the level of durability you expect and how many copies likely are going to need all in copies. Um, and then I made, again, over here, the key assumptions are uh, your, the cost of your tape library. I took the cost of a Dell ML6010 library. The capitalization period of it, um, I used is three years. Um, the cost of IT staff, you'll find, is as you look at this, a significant driver. So, you know, I, I started with a 90,000 number, and then what's the percentage of time spent um, on managing that tape infrastructure? And number of, of restores per month. And then this last one is really interesting. It's the what, what likely optimization can you get um, of that 500 terabytes or of that data that you have up here in cell B3? What percentage of that? do you think you can optimize if you had easy access to it, right? So this is the, if I can go back and find those 23 copies that IDC says an average enterprise has, or if I can go and find the 30% of, of data that can be, that's just junk and it can be deleted. You know, what's, what kind of optimization can you get? Because again, doing it in the tape is not impossible. It really isn't, but it's really hard, right? It's really, it's just, it's just, it's, it's almost, Again, we talk to talk to folks who do this. That it's just almost not worth putting a lot of effort into finding all that all the duplicate data and all that garbage data. Um, so as as I go through, you know, the, the assumptions over here on the right hand side, the cost of cloud. You've got the capacity, the operations, the networking, and the reads. Um, and and as you as you work through this, this will be online um, in a in a prettier format um, after the webinar. But today, if you change, let's say your your cost of of uh, of uh, an IT staff, fully loaded IT staff is seventy thousand. You see how it changes. You know, right now it's it's sixty seven thousand dollars a year to protect that five hundred terabytes. If you go up and you say, you know what, I can uh, withstand lower. Um, uh, I, I have a lower durability threshold. Maybe you only need one copy. That brings down your cost. Let's say um, the cost of my tape library is only twenty five thousand. That changes. You can see how that changes the cost. Let's say. Uh, somebody actually uses 70%, uh, say it's, or even let's say it's 100%, one full person dedicated to doing this. Um, you can see how, the, how your uh, average uh, changes, how your average cost or your cost per year change. Um, you, and of course, you can go back here and change the amount of data. So if it's, if it's um, you know, let's say it's a, it's a full petabyte um, and you need two copies. Uh, but you can see the differences here. The, it's important to to figure out, and the optimizations, again, it's at 30%, I think this is one of the really key assumptions. If you can get 70%, it's gonna dramatically, essentially lower the cost of cloud because you're, you've removed a big part of your uh, petabyte corpus that you, you need to store on tape. Um, and if you think that you're, you're gonna get a very small percentage, you can see how much that increases the cost um, to uh, keeping it in the cloud. Uh, you can see down here the sort of the cost assumptions I use, street price for LTL7 versus LTL6. And this is, again, a tool that's going to be made available online um, after this webinar. So let's go ahead and go back and wrap up uh, this conversation with some future considerations and next steps. Uh, we've talked a lot about how we, we talked about this cloud and what they were intended for. Uh, we went and tried to, I think, look at some real world examples of, of cost associated with each. Um, but I did want to talk a little bit about the future of, of sort of changing, huh, changing expectations <laughs> and changing technologies. So cloud offers declining cost, right? On an ongoing basis, 
you'll see over a period of time, and, and I, pr I probably should have included this in this conversation, but there's, there's declining cost in cloud. As soon as the cost uh, to us or, or to, to the industry um, hit, typically they get passed on some relatively quick period of time to, to the end users, to, to you, to the consumer of the cloud, which is to say is very different than a capital outlay, right? Not very many uh, hardware manufacturers go back to you six months after their cost to come down and say, "Hey, uh, here's your money back because uh, because you've at that point obviously you've purchased that that hardware." So you have declining cost um, and you have increasing utility. And and what we haven't talked about was the increasing utility. And what do I mean by that? It's basically just do more with the data more easily, right? So you have lots of data. It gets put off on these tape drives and the potential value of this data is is locked away it's really hard to get to so you if you had that in the cloud if you had that online you could do things like analytics we have got a product that does that called uh bigquery bq uh, image analysis uh text and language analysis we've got a vision api and our, and our um, natural language uh, uh api that our services that you can leverage you can lay against the data that's stored online but even more broadly than that, you can have commingled services from other cloud providers, right? We live in this API world where you, if you had access to your long-term store data, you can then do things. You can create new businesses. You can create new revenue streams. You can leverage that long tail of data that in ways you perhaps couldn't in the past. So even just, you know, and again, it's really hard because we're talking about the economic considerations of cloud versus tape. But even if, if, you, if you just think about the possibilities of what you can do with your data, if you had it globally available, globally accessible, um, at a, a very low cost, you know, that's when you really, it really starts to get exciting. And that's when it really changes the economics of, of, of cloud versus, versus tape. So I did want to, want to finish just with a quick introduction to our services, to our product. It's called um, Google Cloud Storage. This is our object store. This is our blob store, and allows you to store, access, and manage your unstructured data on our infrastructure. And the key things are: it gives you unlimited scale, global availability, high durability, eleven nines durability, as we talked about, and low cost. And we have three tiers of storage: our standard, our durable, reduced availability, and nearline storage. Nearline is the one that I've been talking about primarily throughout this. That's a penny a gig per month, um, with the penny. Uh, the, the cost the, to read um, a, a, at a penny a gigabyte. Um, it's high speed. It's, um, again, highly, highly durable. It's 11.9 durability, um, and it's low cost. I did want to, you know, I get asked this all the time, well, how is your cloud different? Um, and I, I, I wanted to, to call out um, just a handful of things, and, you know, you, we, you, should, you, you could sit through an entire presentation on our differentiators, but I did want to talk about our massive scalability. You'll never run out of capacity when using us. Our global network, uh, you know, we've laid fiber, uh, we've, we've laid cables across uh, the oceans. Um, uh, it's strategic to us to be able to get data and keep data on our network as long as possible because we're highly efficient with it. Um, that translates into more predictable performance of the network when you're uh, using uh, our infrastructure. We've got low pricing. We're proud of the fact that we lead the industry in pricing and we'll continue to do that. We've got these interesting cloud services I mentioned before, things like machine learning and data analytics and search that you can leverage against your, against your data. Uh, we have a single API, and this is a real distinction between us and other cloud services. You don't need to have, you don't need to write your data for, uh, for primary or for, for your uh, standard storage. Uh, in one way and write it in a, in a separate way for your archive storage, right? Across all of our tiers of storage, it's the same single set of, uh, single API. Uh, and then we've got tight integration. I say tight integration, that's really with, you know, backup and archive vendors, right? We don't, we are not an archiving vendor ourselves, right? We work with partners. We work with companies like Veritas, with Commvault, uh, who have on-prem um, backup and archiving software. So at the top of this conversation, I, I talked about the critical decision points, right? Oh, let's circle back to these, and and um, you know, I really wanted to, to drive home these points as you look at the, our, at the online calculator and think about the cost of cloud and the cost of tape. Um, first is durability, right? If you can 
if, if you require are required to have high level of durability, right, then you're going to likely end up having to engineer that yourself um, across uh, potentially multiple copies. Um, the personnel costs um, are high, it, 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 rather your personnel costs, if they're high, and if your efficiency is low, then um, then it's it's going to impact the decision between cloud and tape. And again, it's because tape is a, such a manual process. Um, data optimization, it, the more data op optimization you think you can do um, uh, when you have access and availability to your cloud, um, then the more uh, the the uh, benefits of cloud will become uh, reality. And then this data utility or this piece of, you know, boy, if I had access to my data, what new and interesting businesses could I build? What new and interesting services could I build? You know, what, how can I get more value from my data? Um, that, you know, again, with cloud, you, can, you, you have access to it, you can do it, and with tape, you just simply can't. So durability, personnel, uh, how much data optimization you can do, and your data utility. So with that, um, I wanted to just close with um, some, some next steps. And, and you know, I really think you should keep moving. It's great that you're, you're attending this webinar. Um, contact us for the online calculator. Uh, it will make it available. Uh, it, again, it's not perfect. Love your feedback. But I do want to be able to make sure that, uh, or I do want to make that available as a, as, a, as a tool for you in making the decisions. Uh, read a recently published ESG white paper on data protection to the cloud. Uh, watch our other videos in this series. Um, it's at, I think all three of these things are at um, uh, cloud.google.com slash rent storage. Uh, we have a promotional credit uh, running right now, $300. And with that $300, I strongly recommend, I always say this to folks, um, experiment, 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 right? Uh, try, try, try. This is um, the beauty of cloud, right? There is, no, there is no huge upfront cost other than your time, and your time um, can help you determine whether this makes sense or not. So thank you again. Um, this was a, a great opportunity. Hopefully you found some value in this. Um, I do want to, I'll go ahead and stop sharing right here. Um, I do want to thank you for your time. Um, this, 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 I think, um, is a, hopefully will give you some things to consider. Uh, you will have a tool, that tool available. Um, we've got the white paper available. Uh, I recommend going ahead and, and playing with, uh, with the cloud storage. It's an easy thing to learn. Um, it's a low uh, cost. Again, uh, we have a $300 credit running right now. Uh, thanks so much for your time, and uh, look forward to, uh, to uh, working with, uh, with you to help you learn a little bit more about cloud and how it compares to tape. Thanks.